beautiful, graceful, stately. Everyone loves angelfish, but they aren't always peaceful, especially with each other. In fact, they can be real jerks. Freshwater angelfish are cichlids, a diverse family of fishes. Cichlids tend to be social. They live in groups, but these aren't peaceful groups like with barbs or minnows. Instead, cichlids form a hierarchy, competing for status within the group. Scientists think that for a lot of cichlid species, these hierarchies are kept in place by chemical signals the fish release into the water. Every home fish keeper knows that you need to change aquarium water periodically to remove wastes and keep fish healthy. But if you change too much water in an angelfish tank, you can remove these chemical signals. This disrupts the hierarchy and leads to fights and sometimes even death. In this video, I'm going to tell you about a scientific study. Researchers found a way to change just enough water to remove fish waste, but not so much that they took away the chemicals that keep things peaceful. And what they figured out may help you with your own angelfish aquarium. I'm Bob, and this is Sonny's Fishery. Among cichlids, competition, which may take the form of aggression, is a fact of life. They live in a hierarchy. The most dominant fish gets the best territory, the next most dominant gets second best, and so on down the line. As they work out a new hierarchy, fish often attack each other, biting each other's mouths or nipping one another. After the hierarchy is formed, fish enforce their status with dominance displays, such as swimming toward another fish but not biting them, or spreading their fins. The displays keep the social structure in place, keeping fish from getting injured or killed. Researchers believe cichlid hierarchies, in part, may come from chemicals the fish released into the water. In 2012, scientists injected males of the Lake Tanganyikan cichlid Estatotilapia bertoni, now Haplochromus bertoni, with a harmless blue dye excreted in the urine. They saw that dominant males released pulses of urine when they went into the territory of another male, suggesting that chemical signals in the urine may establish a fish's dominance. Researchers in the laboratory of Eliana Gonçalves de Freitas found that keeping pairs of Nile tilapia, Oreochromus niloticus, in a tank where the water was changed continuously led to more attacks from subdominant fish. The researchers speculated that the continuous water change washed away chemicals the fish used to establish dominance. Next, Gonçalves de Freitas and her colleagues studied freshwater angelfish, Pterophyllum scolaire, which they thought might also release dominance chemicals into the water. They wondered if there was an ideal volume for a water change, enough to remove fish wastes, but not so much that it would wash away the chemicals and lead to fights. They divided 135 juvenile angelfish into groups of three fish for three days, enough time to set up a hierarchy. On the fourth day, they assigned each tank to receive one of three water treatments. The first group, the 0% group, wouldn't get a water change, but the researchers would take some water out of the tank and then pour the same water back in. This was to make sure that just handling the water, but not changing the water, would not influence the angelfish's behavior. In the second group, the researchers removed 25% of the water in the tank and replaced it with fresh water. The third group got a 50% water change. After the water treatment, the researchers videotaped the fish to classify their aggressive behaviors, attacks like biting another fish, and displays like chasing another fish. The researchers videotaped each group before the water treatment, then one minute after the water treatment, one hour after the water treatment, two hours after the water treatment, and 24 hours after the water treatment. For the 0% group, the average number of attacks at one minute, at one hour, at two hours, and at 24 hours were similar to those before the water treatment. For the 25% change group, attacks roughly tripled after one minute, dropped to their pre-water change level after an hour, and stayed at that level at two hours and at 24 hours. For the 50% water change group, the situation got violent fast. Attacks nearly quadrupled after just one minute, but after an hour, 
attacks drop to their pre-water change levels. The researchers think this drop was due to the fish exhausting themselves from their post-water change fighting. After the fish had time to rest, attacks shot back up at two hours and again at 24 hours. But the researchers saw different results when they counted the number of displays. For the 0% group, displays dropped after one minute, then they stayed roughly the same at one hour, at two hours, and then went up a little at 24 hours. For the 25% water change group, displays dropped off at one minute and then went back up after one hour, two hours, and 24 hours. For the 50% group, displays plummeted after one minute and stayed lower than their pre-water change level at one hour, two hours, and 24 hours. So, for the 50% group, when attacks shot up, displays dropped way down. In other words, attacks increased after the water change and replaced the displays meant to settle things peacefully. The researchers concluded that the smaller water change provided a way to reduce fish wastes, but at the same time preserved enough of the chemical signals in the water to keep the number of attacks low. Here's the takeaway. Limiting water changes to 25% may keep your angelfish from injuring or killing each other. But this means keeping up with water changes, not doing one big water change to make up for several you missed. Will changing a large amount of water for other kinds of cichlids also make them more aggressive? For some species it may, and for some species it may not. Gonsalves de Freitas and her colleagues conducted a similar study on cichlosoma paranense. In this species, a 50% water change did the opposite and actually reduced the number of aggressive interactions. If you liked this video, here's another one you might also like. For more tips on keeping and raising fish, please subscribe to my channel. Please feel free to share this video with someone else you think might like it. Thanks for watching.